An Indian scholar at Cambridge by the name of Rishi Rajgopat has solved a problem in Panini's Ashtadhyayi, his comprehensive and authoritative text on Sanskrit grammar. This ancient book was written sometime between the 4th and the 2nd century BCE and it is often likened to an algorithm or a linguistic machine because it contains a set of 4,000 rules of grammar and language. These instructions in Ashtadhyayi tell the readers how to form new words in Sanskrit and how to create new sentences that are grammatically correct and use existing words to do so. But Panini's text is not simple. The book is split into eight parts, Ashtadhyayi, and these rules are written as sutras, which are concise pieces of instruction, and their meaning is not always very obviously clear. These sutras in the book are sequential, meaning that each rule is built upon the preceding set of rules in a linguistic device that's called Anuvritti, or the continuation of one rule into the next. This means that the sutras use recall and reference keywords that were used previously in the previous sutras. Sometimes it is also confusing whether a sutra references any previous rules at all and other times it is unclear whether a rule needs to be continued to the next. More often than not, even when a rule is understood in its meaning, it is unclear where to apply it when creating new words or sentences. But perhaps the most confusing of all is when a linguist knows where to apply one rule to create a new word and then immediately another conflicting one also becomes applicable at the same step simultaneously. This leads to one rule blocking the other one or both blocking each other and this is called rule conflict. When rule conflicts are encountered, it's difficult to decide which rule to pick. Therefore, Panini himself wrote a meta rule. The meta rule states Vipriti Shedhe Param Karyam, which traditional scholars have interpreted as in the event of a conflict between two rules of equal strength, the rule that comes later in the serial order of the Ashtadhyayi wins. What Raj Popat did is he went back to the canon text and reinterpreted the meaning of the word para to right hand side. So according to his interpretation, Viprati Shedhe Param Karyam becomes the rule on the right is applicable. And just like that, he solved a 2500 year old conundrum. Let's understand this with an example. Let's take the example of the word that means from the mantras or by the mantras. In this example, we are looking at a word that is formed by combining the roots mantra and the word for from or by. So the final word means from the mantras or by the mantras. Mantras in this case is plural and mantra means let's say a slogan and the affix bhis means from the something in plural is added to the root word mantra to obtain the form of the word for from the mantras. Now when mantra and bhis are combined, there are two simultaneous rules that come into play according to Sanskrit grammar as outlined by Panini. The rule that applies to the word mantra which ends with an a sound is the serial number 73103 which states that the a, the a at the end of the word needs to be replaced by e when the word is followed by another one that starts with a bha. So the final word becomes mantrebhi. The other conflicting rule is applicable to the word bhis. Its serial number in the text is 719 and it states that when the preceding word ends with an a, replace bhis with ais, so the final word becomes mantraya. Now which rule should be used to form the new word that would mean from the mantras, plural? If we look at Panini's meta rule, Viprati Shedhe Param Karyam, traditional scholars interpreted Param as sequentially later. So between 7.1 and 7.3, linguists would choose the 7.3 rule, which would result in Mantrebhi. But we know from just knowing the Sanskrit language that this is incorrect. This is not the correct form of the word. It is the other rule that gives the correct answer, Mantraya. To come to this conclusion, 
Other scholars previously have invented elaborate linguistic rules such as when a conflict yields the wrong answer, use the exception, etc. But Raj Popat, in his thesis, just used Occam's razor and decided that whenever there is a conflict, the rule that applies to the right side is applicable. He used this definition of param in the meta rule. So, in this example, the rule for bhis is applicable, which replaces bhis with ice, and ultimately comes up with the word mantraya, which is the correct answer. His thesis illustrates this with a bunch of other examples as well. His work contradicts those of many notable scholars before him and rejects their long roundabout solutions to rule conflicts in Sanskrit in general. So, of course, this begs the question, why didn't others think of this before? Turns out, they actually did. After Panini wrote his book, which is not the first, but it is the oldest, most comprehensive surviving one, other scholars wrote their interpretation of Panini's work. First came Katyayana, followed by Patanjali around 2nd century BCE. A small note here is that there were at least three scholars, different scholars, who were known by the name Patanjali who have authored Sanskrit texts. This one talks about the one that came right after Panini. These three, Panini, Katyayana and Patanjali, are considered to be the holy trinity of Sanskrit writers. So Katyayana, when he first started to interpret Panini's texts, he encountered rule conflicts and he did in fact actually come up with the solution of picking the right-hand side rule. However, he seems to have noted this down in a remote piece of work and he too seemingly opted to use the other roundabout ways to resolve rule conflicts and his alternate explanation did not become noteworthy enough through the ages. Remember that Sanskrit studies through centuries have followed the format of one scholar building upon the work of the previous scholars and especially the predecessor, not necessarily always going back to building upon the original canonical text. So this interpretation of para meaning the right hand side was lost until Raj Popat wrote his thesis on it. And that is the problem that he helped solve after 2500 years. Now, how does this help in other applications? Whenever we hear about Panini's work and Sanskrit, we always think of computers, which is the nature of the popular discourse. Sanskrit is touted to be a good language for computers, but this isn't true. If Sanskrit is good for computers, any other language should be good for computers too. And computers don't work that way. But what could be useful for machine learning is Panini's text. Ashtadhyayi is written sequentially as a set of algorithms and instructions. This is similar to how computers process logic. Since there are 4,000 rules to form new grammatically correct words and sentences without errors, and they are sequential, and rule conflict conditions are resolvable, his whole text of Ashtadhyayi can be used to train natural language processing models, NLP. This is not a popular use case, but is a theoretical one. Sanskrit's grammar started to be codified and structured even when it was being spoken while other Prakritic or natural languages were still being spoken. So much of the rules are comprehensive and there are very few exceptions as compared to natural languages when we speak in Sanskrit. This offers a very big advantage to computer algorithms to understand natural language and its nuances and also to generate natural language. This is the only use case for Panini, Sanskrit and computers. This application is probably quite far away in the future. But meanwhile, as it stands today, a little-known ancient problem with Sanskrit grammar has now finally been solved after 2500 years.